No vax, no freedom in Austria. No vax, no freedom in Italy. No vax, no freedom in Ireland. No vax, no freedom in Switzerland, Czech Republic, on and on and on. How can the markets keep going up if you're going to take out, let's give a, a number of about 30% of the population that is not going to be eligible to do what they used to be doing. All right, but even with this manipulated inflation rate, as you're calling it, it's clear that there is going to be action that needs to be taken to tame the inflation beast. And the only way to really do that is to raise interest rates. We know the Fed is expected to accelerate the tapering process, ending the bond buying potentially by March. That opens the door to the Fed to raise interest rates next spring. And it seems like the focus is now on restraining inflation. As you say, Gerald, this is from the same Fed that said, no, no, don't worry, it's only transitory. So you think that the Fed is going to raise rates. My question is when and how aggressively. And then you say this blows everything up then. Yeah, it's, it's, they're going to do it. I believe they're going to do it sooner rather than later, the, in, near the beginning of the year in, in, uh, in January, February. And they're going to do it step by step. They'll play the markets out. I, I believe we're going to probably get through a lot of 2022 in, in moderately good shape. It's going to start really declining after that. When the, my, my hit point is when the, uh, the Fed rate hits around 1.5%. That's, that's going to be the end. And here's what they're going to do as well. Again, your re history repeats itself. Before the elections in 2024, they'll start ri lowering interest rates to artificially prop up the economy again. They do it all the time. So that's going to be the other part of it. They'll so raise it, raise it. So Go you're on. saying 1.5, when interest rates uh, hit 1.5, when the Fed rate hits that, that is going to be the end. You mean we're going to see uh, an equity crash? What do you predict? Oh, yeah, definitely. The end? Yeah, they, they look at the PE ratio. It's way out of line now. It's near its all-time highs. Yeah, there's going to be a crash. There's absolutely no question about it. And again, that brings us back to the, the other issue of this. You know, people ask me, what should you invest in? And I don't give investment advice. Mine is GSB, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Gold and silver are going to take a hit down as inflation rates go up. But when the economy goes down, then your safe haven assets really are worth a lot more. All you have to do is go back to the panic of 08 to watch that happen. So when interest rates go up, they're going to go down temporarily, but only for a little while. And again, the only reason the dollar is so strong is they have no competition. What do you have? A, a, a debt to GDP ratio in the United States, about 106. You have what? China's near 300. Japan's only about 272. So the dollar is not really strong. It only appears to be because it has no competition. Right. Well, let's focus on GSB, gold, silver, Bitcoin, because uh, you spoke to my colleague David Lynn in January of this year. You were very correct in your inflation forecast, but you said that you expected to see gold at 2100 this year yep. and silver at $50. So what happened there? Bit, the cryptocurrencies are what, about $3 trillion worth of trading. The money that went into crypto didn't go into gold and silver. And then again, I don't know if they're doing it now, but the fact is a place called J.P. Morgan Chase got fined how much? $900 million. Why did they get fined? For rigging the precious metals markets? A crime. But you, Michelle, you were, you were seven miles over the speed limit. Where were you? What'd you have to drink? Get out of your car and stand on your head and repeat the alphabet backwards. <laughs> But when Jamie Dimon and the gang rig the precious metals markets, slap on the wrist, and aren't they wonderful people? Well, expand on that, rig the precious metals market. They rigged the precious metals market. They were found guilty of rigging the precious metals market. In 2019, they had to pay a fine of $900 million. Nobody goes to jail. It's only a fine. Oh, and then, you know, you look at the whole, again, I'm not making this up to show when I say it's a crime syndicate. You look at the 131 federal judges 
that ruled on cases in which they had financial interests. Right. So, well, yes, the gold and silver should, to me, should have gone much higher. Why would the equity market? Oh, the, aren't the equity markets doing great right now? How about those, how about those airline stocks and, and the cruise ships? They had a great week. Oh, yeah. As Israel, Italy, uh, United States, Great Britain, one country after another, restricting travel. Do you know what international travel was in November compared to 2019? It was only 33% of what it was in 2019. And you're telling me it's wise investment to go into, into airlines and cruise ships. The thing is a rigged game. You're saying that uh, all equities are rigged here? Or particular I wouldn't say sectors? all of them. But again, you know, again, you look at the people playing the markets and what it's turned into. It, it, these aren't investors. It's a gambler's game. How could the equity markets be going up? How could the econ when you. No vax, no freedom in Austria, no vax, no freedom in Italy, no vax, no freedom in Ireland, no vax, no freedom in Switzerland, Czech Republic, on and on and on. How can the markets keep going up if you're going to take out, let's give a, a number of about 30% of the population that is not going to be eligible to do what they used to be doing. And again, now you have these travel restrictions. Oh, is it a hey, New York City? You're in New York City. Isn't the, the, the commercial real estate sector is doing great. It only has a 28% office occupancy rate. So the, it's a rigged game. All right. So, so Gerald, I hear your point, certainly that when it comes to the legal system, not every player is treated the same. I hear your point that as uh, more and more places impose vaccine mandates, it's going to hamper movements and it's ultimately going to affect the economy for those that refuse to play along. But I want to circle back to gold, silver and Bitcoin, because earlier you said that even though inflation is going to rise, you don't think that gold and silver are going to rise along with it initially. Why no. is that? Because they're going to raise interest rates and the money that it becomes more expensive to buy gold and silver, uh, to buy all commodities. So it, the money is going to go into more, you know, safer bets on getting your money back with a higher interest rate. Do you have an outlook for gold and silver? I know last uh, earlier this year you called it at um, twenty one hundred and for gold and fifty dollars for silver. Do you have no. an outlook of what no, where you no, see gold I really and silver? Don't. No, I really don't. I have a. I have a. Again, for me, the the Bitcoin is is still even though it's gone down. What we're still talking as we're talking now is still around what forty nine thousand dollars. You know, so if it goes down to like thirty five thousand, twenty five thousand, then it could blow out. But gold and silver, I think they're in their low points of their trading range right now. Wait, when you say blow out, if, if Bitcoin hits 25,000, yeah. you mean if yeah. go down to zero? What do you mean by blow out? Not, not zero. It probably I could see it going down to, uh, you know, back to the 8,000 marks when it happened, when it hit, you know, 17,000 back in, uh, was it 2019 or 2018, around that time or 2017. And then it's, it, it took a big hit down, that kind of big hit. It could have a big correction, but I don't see it going away. Again, the only way I see the cryptocurrencies going out is if the governments ban them. And, and that's what's going to hit them the hardest. Uh, but again, look what's going on in China. They, they ban them. And what are they coming out with? They're coming out with the digital yuan. They don't want competition. So if it becomes that kind of a thing, that's going to be downward pressure. But gold and silver, you know, to me, are long-term investments. I don't play the yeah. markets. I play them long-term. I began buying gold at $178 an ounce. Excuse me, $187 an ounce back in the 70s. So I just keep buying it and putting it away, buying it and putting it away, buying it and putting it away.